In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement a multi-level dropdown in React.js. So basically just know that there will be a array of objects given to you and you have to iterate through it or basically recursively go through it and then you have to create a multi-level dropdown. So first to give you the demo of that, you can see over here I have menu 1 till menu 4. If I click on menu 1, nothing happens because within menu 1, there is no children. But if I click on menu 2, then you can see there are two sub menus because this menu 2 has some children. And if I click on menu 3, this has four children. And if I click on menu 4, this has two children. And now you can nest infinite level deep. All right. So based on the data that's been given to you, you have to nest that many level deep. For example, if I click on sub menu 4, you see sub menu 4 also has two more children. So in this way, you can nest infinite level deep and you just have to go through the data or iterate through the data and display it in such a manner to simulate nothing but a multi-level dropdown. All right. And the data structure of this is going to be something like this. Now let me open my VS code. So over here, you can see the menu one has nothing within it because here we only have a label of menu one. It has no sub menus, but for the label of menu two, we have two children. So that's why menu two has a sub menu. And within that sub menu, that is also an array of objects, which contains two labels, sub menu one and sub menu two. So basically any parent which has children will have this sub menu property to it. All right. And the entire structure will be an array of objects and any parent or any element that is going to have a subsequent nested children element so that parent element always needs to have a sub menu for example if i go down here for menu 3 you can see there are four sub menus right so sub menu 1 2 3 and 4 but sub menu 4 also has another sub menu property which has two more children which is the sub sub menu 1 and sub sub menu 2 all right so we will be given a data like this and we need to iterate through this entire data and we need to display this multi-level drop-down structure so now without any further ado let's actually implement this all right so over here on the right side i have my local server open up and this is my react code we are in the app component right now and we have been given the menu data and we need to simulate that multi-level drop-down so let's actually start implementing that so first of all we obviously need to iterate through this data right through this menu data so let's at least display all the top level parent elements first so to do that of course we can just map through this menu data and display the elements so what i'll do is let's say over here i'll create an unordered list and then within this i'll create curly braces then i'll write menu data dot map and i'll extract the individual item and the index then i'll return nothing but obviously a list item all right now in this list item first let's give this a key of index and then of course we need to display the individual labels so over here all i can write is item dot label now if i actually just save this much you can see we already get menu one two three and four all right but now upon clicking on these menus nothing happens so to make something happen to basically display its nested child elements of course the first thing we need to do is we need to give an on click event listener to this list over here and here i'll pass a function which i haven't created yet let's just name it toggle sub menu all right then i'll copy this and let's say i'll just create this right over here toggle sub menu this will be an arrow function all right now first of all let's do one thing to make things more simpler I will not implement the toggle submenu function first. Instead, by default, I just want to display all the nested elements under the parent element as well. So to do that, what I can do over here is I'll create curly braces. And first, I will check if item.submenu exists. Only then, I will call a function named render submenu. All right. And this will take nothing but the argument item.submenu. All right right now this you see upon saving this went away because we haven't created this function yet let's create this over here const render sub menu and this will also be an arrow function all right so of course if each of these elements they include the sub menu if they include the sub menu only then we want to render it because for menu one we don't have a sub menu so in that case we don't need to execute this line so only if sub menu exists then call this function and pass in that particular item dot submenu which is going to be nothing but let's say for menu 2 
we would pass in this item dot sub menu this part over here so this render sub menu function is going to take a parameter named sub menu all right then after this let's actually render that sub menu so what i can do is i can simply return an element so in this case as well for the sub menu this will also be an unordered list basically if you remember these are also nothing but lists only right so what i return over here will have the same structure as this therefore what i can do is i will literally copy this entire part and i'll paste it over here and then i will update a few things so instead of menu data we are receiving the sub menu right to render the sub menus and sub menu is also an array so we can take the sub menu and replace that with menu data all right similarly one more thing i can do is instead of naming this as item i can just name this as sub item this is just to keep the naming convention correct and i can replace the item over here with sub item and same thing over here and over here as well i will replace the item to sub item all right now just with that done you can already see we are able to display the nested elements we can actually see the respective sub menus being rendered for each respective parent all right but of course this looks a bit weird because there's so much gap over here well that's because in the app.css i created this project using Vite and it has added some default styles let me just remove this entire part all right and now you can see things look much better now all right so just by doing this much just by calling this render sub menu so for the individual parent we are basically displaying an unordered list which has the li element and to each of these parent menus if its sub menu exists we are calling render sub menu and the render sub menu is rendering these sub menus so basically it's taking the same unordered list placing it over here and rendering it out all right that's why when we map through menu data it adds the parent and child relationship by calling this render sub menu for each parent element and not only that you can see over here for sub menu 4 it's recursively calling its own sub menu and also displaying its nested child elements that's because the sub menu itself is calling render sub menu again if that sub menu itself which is this part if that sub menu itself contains another sub menu all right so if this sub menu of or if any sub menu contains another sub menu then in that case we're doing the same thing we are basically saying loop through within its own sub menu again right so basically if this sub menu over here if any one of its label again contains another sub menu then we are just recursively calling that same render sub menu function again because the render sub menu function does the job for us why do we need to again call another different method and implement all of this again no simply recursively call that same function consider this recursive call as nothing but looping through the sub menus all over again all right it's just a loop so even for the nested child elements if any of the nested child elements also includes a sub menu in that case recursively call the render sub menu and that will render the child sub menus children as well all right and in this way we can recursively nest up to an infinite level depth so just to show you that let's say to this nested sub menu to sub sub menu one let's say what i'll do is um, let me copy this sub menu and then to sub sub menu one over here let's say i'll give this a sub menu as well and this will be an array and an object and let's say this will have a label of nothing but this time sub 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 menu one if i save it then you can see it's recursively calling it again and nesting another level deep so for sub sub menu one it's also displaying its child element as well so there's so much level nesting going on so let's say if you have any website like flipkart or amazon where there are many list of products then sometimes what happens is there can be n level categories there can be a lot many categories so in that case this multi-level drop down can help a lot all right so let me actually just remove this from here this sub 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 menu one all right now with that done there is one last thing remaining wherein let's say if i click on this then nothing happens so we also want to add a feature where if i click on the parent then the nested child element should collapse all right so in the final build if i click on this they all get hidden back again and if i again click they all become visible all right let's do that as well so that is going to happen in the toggle sub menu this toggle sub menu is called when i click on a particular element all right on any of these elements because all of them have the toggle sub menu event listener this and this as well so here what i can do is first of course this automatically receives an event then over here what i can do is 
I can first select the children of the particular parent. So I can write let sub menu. This should be sub menu equals e dot target. Sorry, this should be e dot target dot query selector. And I'm going to select nothing but the ul tag. All right. So first, I'm trying to access the sub menus of that parent element. All right. And if, of course, if the sub menu doesn't exist, then we just need to return right away from here because there's nothing to toggle. But if it exists, then we go down to this line. And in that case, I can write some logic. But first, what we need to do is by default, we need to make sure that these sub menus are hidden right like these sub menus have a display of none because if you remember in this application if i refresh this then by default the sub menus were not visible only when i click on this that's when they come out so let's do that over here as well for that what i can do is actually write over here to the ul in the render sub menu and give a class name of sub menu right we don't need to give it over here because we know that this is always the parent the top level the topmost level and the render sub menu is always these these children elements or these children elements all right and we need to hide these not the top most level ones so i'll give this a class of sub menu i'll go to my app.css and right over here i will give this a display of none all right and by doing this they get hidden by default if i click on this of course nothing's going to happen now so over here in the toggle sub menu what i can do next is if sub menu dot style dot display equals nothing but none then in that case we can simply write sub menu dot style dot display equals block so if it's already none then upon clicking it change its display to block otherwise just change it to none so otherwise means if it's already visible then change it back to none now if i save this and i click here well you see nothing's happening and there is actually very weird behavior that I'm going to show you now. So let me just refresh this again. Notice something. If I click on this once, nothing happens. But if I click on this again, then it drops down. Similarly with this, if I click here, nothing happens once. If I click on this the second time, only then it starts to display. Now why is that happening? Well, that's because, well weirdly enough, the first time we click on any of these after refreshing, it's pretty much not going here, right? That is what it has to mean. So what we can do is we can actually try to console log this. So I can write console.log. Let's just console log submenu.style.display. I open my console. So let's say I refresh this. And then I click on menu 2 for the first time. So you can see it's not showing me anything. Like something got printed. You can see in the console something got printed because it's showing app.jsx line 38, which is this. But it's saying that there is nothing in submenu.style.display the first time we click this but then the second time i click it that's when we get display of none all right so the second time i click it the display over here realizes that the value is none and then this condition becomes true and then we are able to make it block so then this becomes visible so to fix this it's pretty simple actually since we know that the first time we click this we get nothing over here and that the second time we click it that's when we get the value so we can actually add two checks over here so the second check is going to be only for the first case where we get nothing over here. So what I can do is I can write submenu.style.display equals equals to none. So if that's the case or let's just account for the first case if submenu.style.display is false. So basically if it returns nothing. So if there is nothing then that is also false, right? So if it's false then in that case also basically if it's empty then in that case also change the style.display to block. All right. Now if I save this and let's say I close the console and i refresh the page and now if i click on menu 2 then voila you see on the first click itself the drop down expanded that means on the first click itself it checked that this one got triggered because it showed nothing for submenu.style.display and in that case also we are saying go ahead and change the submenu.style.display to block all right and if i click on this again it hides back all right now the toggling will work for each of these menus all right and if i try to actually try to click on sub menu 4 then you see nothing happens but we know that sub menu 4 also has its own nested children all right so if you see sub menu 4 also has its nested children so why is it not working for sub menu 4 well that's happening because of event propagation so to actually understand this better what i can do is let me first refresh this and over here in the console log 
let me log the sub menu over here all right and i'll just click on menu 3 i'll open the inspector console all right and then now if i click on sub menu 4 then you can see we get the ul but we get it two times and if i expand this you can see this has the sub sub menu 1 and sub sub menu 2 so basically it has the value and we are also getting the appropriate ul and it has the display of none as well then why is it not changing its style to block it should change its style to block and display the nested children elements for this sub menu 4 right but why is that not happening well to help you understand that properly let me actually copy this paste this over here and now let me save this let me clear this and now let me click on sub menu 4 if you notice when i clicked here it's getting triggered twice basically this function over here is getting triggered twice so when i click here it's first saying none because the display is none by default right for its children elements so the sub menu for the nested children has display of none but when we click this the first time the console log prints none because it's initially none then the logic goes over here and it prints it to block but let's say i just copy this remove it from here and i place it here then let's see what happens so let me clear the console and if i click here then you can see the first time i click the style display was none but then it goes here and it becomes block then because it's getting triggered twice because this function is getting triggered twice for some reason it comes here again and it sees that it was already block so it goes to this condition because it's not none it's block because of the first trigger then in the second trigger it changes it to none and that's why the console log returns none or it prints none all right so basically when i click here this function is getting triggered twice which is causing the sub menu or the children of this sub menu to become none again basically it's styled or display to become none again Do you understand because this is getting triggered twice so our net result is basically none because it starts from none becomes blocked then becomes none again now that is happening because of event propagation because when i click this our event is getting propagated upwards as well basically it bubbles up and this one also gets triggered this menu also gets triggered because i'm clicking on this and this is a part of this this menu 3 so when i click this the toggle sub menu for this gets triggered but then the event bubbles up and the toggle sub menu for this parent also gets triggered so to fix that there is a very simple solution all we have to do is we need to write e dot stop propagation all right right at the beginning of the function i'll save this i'll actually close the console and i'll reload the page and now let's say if i click on menu 3 then if i click on sub menu 4 and voila you can see we are able to see the nested children of the child element itself all right so by doing stop propagation the toggle sub menu function doesn't get triggered twice and so the style or display doesn't become none all over again and that's why when we click here we are able to properly see it get triggered all right let me just remove the console log from here and if you want you can give this a cursor of pointer and that's up to you let's say i actually go to my app.css and to the entire ul itself i'll give this a cursor of pointer right now it looks much better now you can see everything works fine if i click on this this can get toggled similarly with this with this as well and this since it has no elements so this will not show any children and if i click here this also gets toggled and as i had already shown you if i add more sub menus over here this will keep nesting more and more so that means we can infinitely nest this so basically that is how you build a multi-level drop down so in your interview as well the interviewer might ask you to create a multi-level drop down and they might not even give you this data you might have to create this data on your own over here and then iterate through it and create this structure so to remember how this data was created or how this array of objects has been structured all right because you might not be given this from before as well you might have to create this on your own right on the spot all right so with that we are done with the project and i hope you found it insightful